Solar Batteries 101, a beginner's guide to buying a home battery in Australia, 2023 edition. This guide, updated annually, covers 10 key points that will teach you how to buy a battery for your home with confidence. I'm Finn Peacock, a chartered electrical engineer who founded Solar Quotes way back in 2009. It's my mission to give you no BS, independent, technically accurate advice about solar and batteries. Let's get to it. Point number one, is a battery right for you? When people ask me if solar is worth it, my honest answer is hell yes, unless they have a heavily shaded roof. But when it comes to batteries, it's not as straightforward. If you want a battery, it will be for one or more of these five reasons. Reason one, blackout protection. Wild weather is getting more common. In breaking news, an intense storm cell is sweeping across the cities. One in a hundred year events seem to be happening every year and Australians are losing power more often. Properly designed and installed solar and batteries are a great way to protect your family from blackouts. And I gotta say, it's a pretty cool feeling to have your lights on and beers cold while the rest of your street is in the dark. Reason number two, the environment. A few years ago, I would have told you that adding solar to your roof was much better for the environment than adding a battery, but that's changed recently. Australia is winning at solar. We've got so much that at times, there is more solar than the grid can handle. At other times, the grid is crying out for cheap, clean energy. The biggest challenge we have to getting a fully renewable grid is getting through the evening demand peak as the sun sets and everyone gets home and switches everything on. A battery takes some of your daytime solar and uses it to reduce this peak demand, helping us to get to 100% renewables on the grid. So while we still need to add more solar to help get us through winter and crappy weather, Pairing that solar with a battery will give it the most bang for environmental buck. Reason number three, economics. Being honest about the economics of batteries leads people to accuse me of being anti-battery. On the contrary, I love batteries. I have one on my own home. I simply don't like how some dishonest companies sell them. Their savings are often wildly exaggerated and miscalculated and often sold as a magic bullet without proper consideration of the solar, battery and tariff combination that will give you the maximum savings. Here are some ballpark numbers. A typical home battery on a standard tariff with enough solar to charge it reliably through winter will save between about $500 and $850 per year. If you are forced to be on a time of use tariff, the savings can be from about $600 to $1,000 a year. Reason number four is spite. Some people truly hate electricity companies. They are highly motivated to kick them to the curb by going off grid. But I've found that once people discover the high cost of going fully off grid, their convictions tend to waver. And finally, reason five, early adopters and tech nerds. Some people really like battery tech and want to play with it. I'm in this category, I love them. So what's the bottom line? These are all valid reasons for wanting to buy a battery. If any of them motivates you, I say go for it. Point two, what can you expect to pay for a battery? The size and thus price of a battery depends on how many kilowatt hours it can store. As with solar panels, economies of scale kick in the larger the battery, but the effect is smaller. My solar battery storage comparison table, linked in the description, shows approximate prices for many batteries available in Australia, but the prices listed do not include installation costs. Speaking broadly, here are some prices I'd consider reasonable. 5 kilowatt hours of storage, $7,000 to $9,000 installed. 10 kilowatt hours of storage, $11,000 to $14,000 installed. 15 kilowatt hours of storage, $15,000 to $18,000 installed. If you want to install the famous Tesla Powerwall battery, you'll get 13 kilowatt hours of storage and backup, and it will cost about $20,000 unsubsidized installed on your home. It's a great unit if you can afford it. You may see lower prices advertised online in the paper and on telly. Yeah, right. Rusty balls here. My mates at Dodgy Solar have got a super solar deal that'll knock you for a six. 
Later in this guide, I talk about why I'd go nowhere near a cheap battery. Note that the cost of installing a battery can vary wildly depending on how involved the installation is. Suppose you need a switchboard upgrade or reconfiguration, long cable runs or safety equipment such as bollards or fireproof backings. You'll quickly add thousands to a quote. In terms of battery brands I trust, I've put together the following chart. It shows all the brands I'd be happy to recommend to a friend at the time of filming. High battery prices have made people ask whether there are legitimate ways to pay less for one without compromising quality. Well, there are a few ways to get a discount on a battery system. Rebates and virtual power plants can improve battery payback time. I discuss these in point four. Point three, what size battery do you need? The amount of storage you need to buy in kilowatt hours depends on your nighttime energy use. The typical Australian home uses 16 to 20 kilowatt hours over 24 hours. Over 60% of this electricity usage is between sunset and sunrise for a nine to five household. So to run your home off a battery, the minimum size I'd recommend is 10 kilowatt hours. You'll also want at least eight kilowatts of solar panels to charge it reliably through the year, more if you have gloomy winters. Hello Tasmanians. Point four, rebates and virtual power plants can improve battery payback. There are two ways to pay less for a battery, state level rebates and virtual power plants or VPPs. For rebates at the time of filming, unlike for solar power, there is no federal battery rebate. Sorry. For VPPs, most states have at least one VPP available. There are two advantages of VPPs and two drawbacks. Advantage one, you may get an upfront discount on a battery system if you buy it from the VPP directly. Some VPPs will give you a monthly bill credit. Others may give you a cash discount. Advantage two, some VPPs pay you a bonus for charging or discharging the battery when the grid needs support. Depending on how generous the VPP is, this may substantially improve your battery economics. Drawback one, the more your home battery is used, the shorter its lifespan. Drawback number two, because stored energy is usually most valuable in the evening peak, VPP operators may force your battery to charge from the grid in the mid afternoon, discharging into the grid shortly after sundown, leaving you with little or no energy storage to get you through the night. There is an alternative to VPPs where you can keep control of your battery. You can sign up for an electricity retailer that passes through the, at times, wildly fluctuating wholesale price of electricity. An example retailer is Amber. With a battery, you can try and avoid paying for electricity when prices are sky high and sell your battery energy at those high prices instead. In a volatile market like we've had in Australia recently, this can be lucrative. I know of solar and battery owners that have made a couple of thousand bucks in the past 12 months. But playing this game comes with a big caveat. Past profits and no indication of future profits. In my opinion, this is a game for advanced players only and it is impossible to predict your savings or losses, so buyer beware. Point five, common techniques of dodgy battery salesmen. Many honest companies ethically sell batteries. They take the time to run you through the pros, cons, and economics. But as with any new bill reducing technology, they also attract bad salespeople. They see an opportunity to cash in on consumer confusion, promise the world, and bag a hefty commission. Here are the go-to tactics of dodgy battery salesmen. Technique number one, promising zero dollar bills with small batteries and small solar. Smooth talking battery salesmen promising zero dollar electric bills are all too common. With enough solar and a big enough battery, anyone's bill can go to zero. Often hard selling salespeople don't even sell a big enough battery system to get a homeowner's bills to zero, or even care if the owner has enough solar capacity to charge it throughout the year. Instead, they sell a small sub six kilowatt hour battery with a fat commission. Technique number two, bait and switch, a classic tactic is to quote cheap and then on installation day, they'll demand thousands more to finish the installation. Technique number three, false scarcity. It's common to get a letterbox drop, inviting you to join a closed group battery test, offering home energy at a substantial discount. And wouldn't you know it, there are only a few places left, so you need to get in quick. My advice here is simple. If something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Point six, battery backup. Know what you should be asking for. If you're buying a battery, make the most of it. Ensure it's installed and configured to back up some or all of your home. It sounds surprising, but backup is not a given when buying a battery. You need to make sure you specifically ask the installer for it. You should seriously consider whether you need whole house backup 
are only some essential circuits like fridge, lights, TV. Also, take the time to learn how much power those essential appliances use and how long they can run for before draining your battery. If your battery is wired to back up your whole home, here's what can happen. You don't even notice the power has been cut. You carry on using your heating, cooling, hot water, oven, pool pump as usual. Your battery either overloads on power demand or runs out of energy within a few hours. You're as blacked out as the rest of the street. My battery backs up the lights, kitchen, except oven and air conditioner in my house. If I have a power cut, it's obvious and I know to use my electricity carefully, especially the air conditioner. What I consider to be gold standard in battery backup is when your solar panels will charge your battery even if the grid goes down. I call this apocalypse proof backup. Say this to your installer, I want my batteries to charge for my solar panels when the grid is down. This might not be possible in rare cases if you have a tricky install. Your installer will talk you through your options. Point seven, thermal runaway. Also known as why you shouldn't buy a cheap battery. Because batteries are expensive, people always want to find cheaper options. After all, they're all the same, right? Wrong. Lithium based batteries can store large amounts of energy. When they charge and discharge, they generate heat. If charging and discharging are not managed correctly or there is an electrical fault, thermal runaway can occur. Thermal runaway is a fancy way of saying a big ass fire. With the amount of energy stored in lithium batteries, they can burn for hours. There are two common types of lithium battery. Confusingly, they are both lithium ion batteries, but the two types are more specifically NMC and LFP. NMC catches fire more easily and will burn for longer than LFP, but be wary of any salesperson that tells you their lithium battery can't catch fire. They can and complacency is dangerous. Now, different manufacturers have different ways of avoiding thermal runaway. Properly configured battery management software requires properly funded research and development teams. Many big names have also invested in hardware safety features as a final line of defense. For me, this is deadly serious. Cheap batteries installed for peanuts worry the hell out of me. Don't gamble with your safety to save money on a battery. If you can't afford a decent brand, don't buy one. Point eight, batteries degrade faster than solar panels. Solar panels have 25 year performance warranties. This warranty states they won't degrade more than a certain amount per year. Most batteries have 10 year warranties. Only a few have warranties longer than this and they tend to be more expensive. The typical budget solar panel will degrade by about 0.5% per year over a 25 year period. The typical battery will degrade by 3% per year or more. The more you use a battery, the more it degrades in terms of the amount of energy it can store. Anyone with a mobile phone will have experienced this. Once a battery reaches the end of its warranty, degradation is not linear. Sharp declines are highly likely. Let's use the Tesla Powerwall's warranty as an example. It says the battery will provide 70% of its initial 13 and a half kilowatt hour capacity after 10 years. This works out to about a 3% annual degradation. I'll guess from year 11 onwards, the annual drop will be higher. As it'll be another five years or so before any power wall gets to 10 years old, we'll have to wait to see if I'm right. Many models of battery financial payback assume no degradation. This can make the economics of batteries look better than they are. Take the time to understand your solar battery's warranty performance and degradation, then make sure your expectations of a home battery system's performance towards the end of its warranty are realistic. Point nine, battery warranties, what to look for. Reading battery warranties can be tedious. I know, because I've read a bunch. Here are the key points to understand about any battery you're thinking of buying. First up, battery degradation. What capacity does the battery have at the end of its warranty? 60% after 10 years is a typical amount. Also ask, is your warranty the same if you're part of a VPP? Joining a VPP can reduce what your warranty covers. Next, look for gotchas. Are there any clauses in the warranty reducing what's covered or which void it entirely? Some warranties don't allow you to cycle a battery more than once a day. Others offer unlimited cycles for the warranty period. Others void the warranty if the ambient temperature goes outside a narrow range. Some mandate that the battery must always have an internet connection. Finally, some require online warranty registration shortly after installation. Now check, does the warranty cover the entire battery or only parts of it? A classic example is a 10 year warranty for the battery, but only five years for the supporting electronics. If something important breaks in year six, you've got a hefty repair bill coming your way. Next up, what does the manufacturer cover for warranty replacements? Some manufacturers cover labor costs involved with diagnosing and repairing a battery, others don't. 
Some have a clause stating if they deem the battery beyond repair, they'll compensate you financially based on the age of the battery. This compensation can be stingy. Now, do extended warranties also increase the energy throughput in kilowatt hours? I saw a battery manufacturer trumpet their industry leading 20 year extended warranty, but purchasing this extended warranty didn't increase the energy you could use. All it did was give you an extra 10 years to use it. Lucky last, who's backing the warranty? And this is a big one. Ideally, a battery brand would have an established Australian office, meaning they can't pack up and slink home to wherever to shirk their responsibilities. Many companies have started to import and sell batteries from overseas. There's nothing wrong with this, but ask yourself, how likely is it a small importer will be operating in 10 years? I'll finish by saying my solar battery storage comparison table, linked in the description, has links to all the warranty documents for the batteries listed. Point 10, what to consider for an optimal installation. Firstly, where is the battery going to go? Battery standards are strict on where they can be installed. For example, you're not allowed to install a battery under stairs or access walkways, in a roof or wall cavities, or in a habitable room. If you want to have your battery installed in a compliant location away from the meter box, be aware that the cost of cabling can add up very quickly. The difference in price between installing it next to the meter box and somewhere else in your house can be $1,000 or more. Also consider, will your switchboard need an upgrade to accommodate the extra battery equipment? Depending on the size of the upgrade, this can add thousands to a quote. Is your solar array big enough to charge the battery even in winter? The bigger a battery, the more solar you'll need to charge it and power your home. What circuits in your house do you want to back up? The less you back up, the longer your battery will last in a blackout. If your batteries are charging from your solar panels, which is apocalypse proof backup, you can run these circuits for quite some time. Finally, are you planning on installing your battery in a garage? Then you'll need bollards installed for safety reasons. You don't wanna be crashing your car into that battery. I'll just take a moment to say that I've been running the website Solar Quotes for the last 14 years. In that time, I've built up a great network of pre-vetted installers that can give you quotes for solar and batteries for your home. Just visit my website, solarquotes.com.au, pop your postcode into the top right box, fill in the form, and I'll do my absolute best to match you with up to three installers I trust in your area. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.